the enemy. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submission to God gives you the ability to resist the devil. Not your credentials. This, see, I can talk on these things because this is exactly how my mindset used to be. And I had to repent of a lot of this stuff that I was teaching. And I taught it fervently and passionately. I feel like Saul to Paul. I was passionately, and I would, anyone disagree with me? Well, you need deliverance. Maybe you have a demon. And I would, oh my goodness, I was arrogant. Oh, maybe you haven't gone deep enough. You haven't dealt with real demonic power like I have. That was what I would say. Why? Because it was all rooted in religion. And religion is all about pride and human accomplishment. And so my submission to God is what gives me the power to resist the enemy. Not my ability. Not my knowledge. My submission to God. Because now I'm aligned with him. I resist the enemy. And what does he do? He flees. So the moment you stand in that position, he sees, oh, they know who they are. He's out of there. He's gone. So now you deal with that aspect of it. So you rebuke the liar. You resist him. And now begins the work of renewing the mind. This is where we get stuck. You rebuke him. You resist him. He's out of there. But then you keep rebuking and resisting, rebuking and resisting, going, why isn't this working? Because you didn't get to the next step, which is renewing the mind. You have two enemies, Satan and self. Satan is dealt with through authority. Self, that is the grace of God giving you the discipline to enact spiritual living in everyday life. And so we see where the scripture says, Romans 12, 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by what? Changing the way you think. Or be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There it is. How do you experience transformation? It's your mind. Now we talked about in previous sessions, the lies and then the reinforcing lies. But watch this now. I'm going to show you something. Knowing what you know about scripture now, Knowing what you know about how the enemy works, knowing what you know about the dynamics of how the enemy attacks believers, let's look now with fresh eyes at Ephesians chapter 6. I want you to start seeing some of this. Oh, this is going to be so powerful. I'm excited. I, I love this. I love this revelation from the word. Okay. Ephesians 6. Watch this now. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many, as we're talking, you feel like burdens lifting? It's like, wow, okay, I can see a path forward now. I don't have to deal with this for the rest of my life. Okay, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Watch this now. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 11, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Two things here. Number one, it's a command. You put it on. There's something you have to do now to use or make use of this armor that God has given to us. Now watch this. Read along with me. So that you will be able to stand firm against some strategy. What? All. Is it some or all? all? All strategies of the devil. In other words, anything the enemy can do to you can be thwarted by use of the armor of God. There's no attack not covered. There's no mystery uncovered and that needs to be uncovered. There's no technique not mentioned. All strategies of the devil. That word strategies means methods or deceptions. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. So there's the command. And then again, we see all strategies, not some all, not some all. Now, verse 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Notice here, you put on God's armor, and then it speaks of the time of evil. In other words, you prepare for spiritual battle not when you arrive in the battle. 
spiritual battle is prepared for in the lifestyle you live leading up to it. A surgeon doesn't study the textbooks right before the surgery. They go through years of medical training. The soldier in battle doesn't just show up and go, how do I use this weapon? They go through boot camp, training, conditioning, break them down, tear them up, send them into the battle. But they don't go without first being prepared. Athletes do not win championships and medals in the moment that they technically win them. They win championships and medals in the disciplined lifestyle leading up to that key moment. In the same way, you must wear this armor, live this way, so when the battle comes, you're ready. I know how the enemy affects me. He lies. So when he's ready with a lie, aha, I found you. And no matter how convincing the lie, no matter how seductive the lie, no matter how convenient the lie, I'm going to resist that lie. And how do I know? The Word, the Holy Spirit, sound teachers. Now watch this. 14 through 17. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Do you know what those fiery arrows are? They're his lies. Now, now, now fire, like deception, spreads if you don't quench it. Watch this now. Verse 17, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, what is the belt of truth? It's simply truth. What have we learned so far? Spiritual warfare is the fight to believe God's truth over the enemy's lies. If you apply this armor, you can succeed against all strategies. There's not a method he can use that can work if you wear this armor. So what does the armor do? By seeing what the armor does, we expose what his strategies are. So the belt of truth is truth. Body armor of righteousness. This is the righteousness gifted to us by God when we what? Believed. Now, if you study the armor, this would be armor in which the belt holds the body armor in place. Truth holds righteousness to us. You cannot walk in righteousness unless you're walking in truth. This is why I say that the root of temptation is deception. Because if you don't have the belt of truth, you're not wearing the body armor of righteousness. So truth holds to us righteousness. Watch this now. Shoes of peace. What's the peace? What are the shoes of peace? It's the declaration of the truth of the gospel. There again, we see truth. The shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? The shield of faith, and I'll come back to this in a moment, is your belief in what God has said. I have faith in what God has said. Now, how do we quench the fiery darts? Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. How do we quench the fiery darts? The shield, not the, not the sword, it's the shield. The shield, we hold it up, it quenches the fiery darts. Now watch this. When the enemy lies to me, I hold up my belief in what God has said and the dart is quenched. That's how it works. So the enemy launches a lie. You can either choose to get hit with that dart and believe it, or you can say, I'm holding up instead my belief in what God has said, and I promise you every time the shield will hold. Every time the shield will hold. Now watch this, the helmet of salvation. What is this? Well, 1 Thessalonians 5.8 gives us insight. You know the helmet of salvation is mentioned elsewhere in Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.8, and it tells us clearly, but let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. What is that confidence? That is belief, I am born again. That is belief in the finished work of the cross. That is belief in the grace of God. That is belief in the power of the blood of Jesus. I'm confident in that salvation. So that helmet now is belief in the truth about what God has done concerning your salvation. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the truth of God's Word. Do you see a theme here? 
every piece of armor is all about fighting deception. So here's how the battle looks. 